Hello everyone, welcome back to my next YouTube video. As you can see, I have made a lot of changes to my structure of how I'm doing a video. And today I'm going to be showing you an extremely cool game analysis, an extremely instructive game by Joe's Raw Capital Banca and Saveli Tartakower. So these are two extremely famous super GMs that have been extremely famous. Capablanca obviously being one of the world champions and Tartakower having a few openings named after him. So first, this game was an extremely instructive endgame game by Joe's Royal Capablanca and how he defeated an extremely strong opponent. So this game started off by d4 and after d4 black plays the move e6 which attempts white to play e4 and go into the French, or if white doesn't, then black sometimes will play the Dutch. And this is exactly what happens in this game. And here, Capablanca plays c4, and after knight f6, Capablanca will play bishop g5. And this move is an extremely subtle move because it thinks as though that black is going to get tons of tempi with bishop e7 castles and black's gonna play h6 sooner or later and although it wasn't played in this game and bishop on g5 is usually quite misplaced and nowadays we know that it's not the best move but the opening isn't the main importance of this game so tartakower plays an extremely sharp 94 line meaning that he wants to go for a win with the dutch instead of just playing solidly and white starts trading the pieces and as you can see here, see here, white has a slight advantage, but he also has this extremely vulnerable c3 pawn. And this pawn is an extremely sharp position because now white has c5 breaks, but white sometimes doesn't have any other moves to play. So in fact, this is the reason why black plays queen takes e7, and then after here, black will take the knight. Because now black wants to get into a good knight versus bad bishop position because this bishop will get restricted by black's amazing pawn chain. However, Capablanca is prepared for this and so the game will go on. And here, white has ex a lot of moves to play, but Capablanca decides to go for an extremely ambitious line. He plays queen h3. Now, normally black is the one attacking the Dutch with his amazing pawn structures and how he is able to bring over. But here Capablanca finds an extremely good idea. After Tartakower plays rook f6, which means that he wants to bring his rook to the h and g files and attack down these files, white plays f4. And this move is extremely strong because white, black has these doubled c pawns. Now white has the e4 option. This c4 pawn controls the center, while this bottom c3 pawn here controls d4, which gives white an extremely good pawn structure in the middle of the board, right here. So here, black plays knight a5, which somewhat looks like a Nims of Indian now, because black wants to play something like c5. And after Capablanca brings, brings his queen back, because now the pawn's on f4, d6 is played, and after a rookie one, queen d7, here Capablanca breaks with e4. And this is the biggest problem in the Dutch. The e6 pawn is a weak pawn. d6 wasn't the best move because now it weakens this e6 pawn. And as you can see now, these double c pawns and this d pawn are really starting to hurt black's position. Black is getting cramped. Here black takes, white takes back, g6 to prevent queen h7, g3, king f8, king g2, rook f7, h4, d5, cd5, and d5 here wasn't the best move because now there's this important weak e5 square and this also allows white to undouble his pawn so now there's no bad pawn on c4 and this knight on a5 is a bit misplaced and here Capablanca plays an extremely counterintuitive move he plays queen takes e8 now that is counterintuitive because normally this endgame would be bad because white has three pawn islands so one here, two, three, and black has one full pawn island here and another one here. So black should be better on pawn structure, but Capablanca uses something that is extremely strong. The knight on e5 is misplaced. Whenever black plays knight c3, six, white will play bishop b5, skewering the knight. And if knight b7 is what's going to happen in the future. 
But however, here Tartakower doesn't really care because now Capoplanca plays an extremely good move. So you can pause the video and take your time to find the move. Okay, I hope you spot this. Capoplanca uses Black's bad knight on a5 and plays h5. h5 is an extremely standard pawn break. And this pawn break wants to weaken Black's kingside. And this move is actually extremely hard to go against because white is using his amazing minor piece on d3 while black's minor piece on a5 is somewhat on the edge. So there are a lot of sayings but one saying that I learned before are that knights on the rim are dim and this is exactly what it means. It means that the knights on the edges of the board are supposedly bad. And this means that now white's bishop is now the monster of the board attacking everywhere. Here white takes on g6, black takes back, and here white plays rook h1. So now there's an open file for white's rook, so white is slowly making progress. Here king f8, rook h7, rook c6. So it looks like Tartacolor is attacking c3 and making sure everything is fine. However, here white black play, white plays g4 immediately and this move is not the best move but capablanca shows his endgame technique because a normal player would try to bring his king to the queen side as fast as possible but capablanca doesn't care capablanca just wants to push these pawns to victory and here if tartakova plays rook takes c3 black white plays bishop takes g6 and here Black will play something like rook c4, which is followed by extremely strong moves like rook f7, king e8, if king e8, rook c7, and white will start picking up pawns. And if black plays something like king g8, white will play rook f5, attacking this pawn, and bring his bishop over to both of these sides. And this is an extremely strong line. And other options include playing f5 immediately, which is also extremely strong, or just playing g5. And this move also brings white's pawns up, and simply white's pawns are just too much further advanced than black's. So back to g4. Here, Tartakower plays a better move. He plays knight c4. And knight c4 is a better move because black's knight is bad, and here, White needs to make a big decision, either allow the knight to come into the game or trade off. And here Capablanca makes the right decision. So what do you think Capablanca played here? Okay, if most of you might have thought that White should not have traded bishop for knight because White's bishop is still the better piece, and you guys are right. However, the next move that Capablanca plays is extremely unintuitive. Here Capablanca plays g5. And normally, white will play something like f5. And f5 is not as good as a move because it allows black to trade off. And in this position, black has a, a better piece advantage after rook f6. Actually, king knight d6 is slightly better because now white, black is also attacking c3. And here, king f3 and rook takes c3 and black is completely fine here. And here, if black doesn't play, if here if white plays f5 and black plays g5, then now black has these rook f6 threats. So after king f3, black can play something like knight d6 again, and this move is good. Or black can play something like rook f6. Actually, yeah, black can play something like rook f6 and king g8, something better. And basically, here, Black's pieces are a lot stronger, and here White's pawn structure is really like lifting off, and that is not really that good. And after Black, White plays g5, Black is able to play knight three check and bring knight to f5. So how does White continue here? White now takes, and the big difference here is that now Black, White's pass g pawn should be sufficient, and here. Black, white sacrifices a pawn, and here white is winning now because now white is able to bring his pawns up. Now, Tartakower made a mistake because here Tartakower should have played rook c6, and after king h5, something king g8. And this is a better continuation, it's not the best, but it's still a good continuation, And but white should still be winning here. 
And as you can see, the computer is going back and forth because now the computer knows that white is winning, which is something that looks counterintuitive at first, but it's actually extremely strong. King G immediately might have been a better move though. So anyway, white was king h4 and rook f3 gets played. And here, white plays g6. And after g6, it looks like black is winning all these material, but here white is able to get his king up. And now white is able to start grabbing pawns. And after king takes f5, now the pawns are equal, but now white's pawn is just amazing. So here after rook e4, king f6, and then now the king is able to break the cutoff. And now white can just sacrifice his pawn and take all the remaining pawns. And after white played d6, here Tartico resigned. So what was Tartikova's main mistake? Tartikova's main mistake was probably playing d6 back here. Why? Because playing d6 allows the e6 pawn to be weak. And after playing e6, now playing d5 was probably Tartikova's second mistake. If Tartikova just waited here and maybe played something like queen c6, he would have been in a much better position. However, what did Capablanca play well and what is worth studying? Firstly, the idea of playing h5. h5 is an extremely strong move in these positions. Always remember, if you have a pawn break that weakens your opponent's pawn structure and you have a bishop or a rook that is supporting your pawn, just do it. It will waste your opponent's time. And in blitz or rapid or any type of game, it's always a good weapon. It is the best move. And here, after rook f6 by Tartikoer, here, white just completely dominates the position by using the bad knight on a5. And now here, another thing learns that you need to be ambitious. Maybe g4 is not the best move, but it's not a bad move, and white is able to continue trying to win. And here, white pushes all his pawns, and here, and now after knight f5, this is when white takes, because white knows that he has a sufficient advantage with his pawn. And after king g3, white black plays rook takes c3. And after king h4, rook f3, g6, rook takes f4, king, f king g5. And now you can suddenly see that although white is down two pawns in this exact position, white is completely winning. In the rook end game, sacrificing pawns for the in initiative is almost always beneficial, which is something else we can learn from one of the best end game players in history. And here after rook e4, king f6, in white invades and wins the whole game and now white is basically winning so this whole game was an extremely good performance by Capablanca and it all started off with white allowing white allowing black to trade off his doubled c pawns which proved extremely good in the future and also black white finding this extremely good f4 idea which makes sure that White controls the whole center. All of these squares are being controlled. And after knight a5, queen f3, d6, and now we finally reach the correct position. As you can see, finishing off the opening and then making the first mistake, so the opening probably ends here with Capablanca's f4, and then black just plays d6 in approximately three moves. Even super grandmasters can make tiny positional mistakes all the time, and this is something worth noting if you want to continue your chess career. So extremely instructive endgame, opening, and middle game by Capablanca, and I hope you learned something from it. Have a great day.